Hello and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association of College Admission Counseling College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer any questions. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. I now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Cedar Crest College. Hi everyone, um, can you hear me all right? Yep, sounds good. Okay, awesome. Hi, my name is Sierra. I am currently an admissions counselor at Cedar Crest. Um, I'm also a current student here, so I'm a senior um, studying business and media studies. So student experience questions are welcome as well. Cedar Crest is a private liberal arts college um, and it is majority women's. So we're a traditional all women's college um, and that just means that women can live on our campus. We still do have males in the classroom. Um, we are in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, we are 84 acres and we are nationally registered arboretum with more than 130 different species of trees. Some um, statistics and ratios for you guys is we, are, um, we have a nine to one student to faculty ratio and our average class size is about, uh, our average lab size is about 12 people while our average class size is about 15. Um, my largest class here has been 23 students. So some of our classes can get a little larger, but most of them stay pretty small. We have over 50 clubs and activities. We have over 40 majors, 30 minors, um, and 15 graduate programs here at the college. So here is a list of a couple of our majors, minors, certificates. Um, we have kind of, a lot that you can choose from and we, you also have the opportunity to kind of create your own major if that is something that you're interested in. We have 11 different um, Division Three athletic sports. Um, wrestling was our newest one just added. Uh, we have basketball, cross country, track and field, field hockey, lacrosse, soccer, softball, swim and dive, tennis, volleyball, and like I mentioned, um, we just added wrestling. We also have a lot of clubs and organizations on campus. Um, so we have 50 plus clubs and organizations, and these are all academic diversity or interest based. So we have clubs like our Forensic Science Student Association or our Psychology Club, and those are all related to the majors. Um, just about every major here has a club associated to it. If you're in the major, that doesn't mean that you have to be in the club. Um, it's just a nice opportunity to kind of explore a little more about your major. Um, we also have um, diversity-based clubs like our Out There um, or our Latinx Club, and those are run out of our Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, so there are a lot of inclusive events um, that also teach students kind of a little bit about different cultures and things of that nature. And then we have interest-based clubs. So that could be like our SAC club, which is our student athlete advisory committee. Um, so if students are interested in sports, they can join SAC. We have our student activities board um, and that is our um, activities board that plans a lot of our on-campus events. Um, so we have a lot of different clubs like that. We also, it is fairly easy to create your own club on campus. Uh, we have a couple of students who created an American um, Sign Language Association club. Um, recently. So you just need about six people to create your own club. So we have uh, a few different um, resources for our student success. Uh, our first one is our IT department. Um, they just help with a lot of our passwords, getting into all of our accounts, and they're a crucial part since a lot of our stuff goes through IT, obviously. Then we have our student success center. Um, so we have a tutoring center on campus. Um, and that tutoring center is free for our students. Um, we have both peer professional and online tutoring, so actually all three. 
Um, and if there's someone or a class that you need a tutor in uh, that we don't already provide a tutor for, we'll go out and find um, a student or a professional who has excelled in that class greatly so we can kind of um, get you that information um, and get you a tutor. And then we also have our career planning center. Um, Cedar Crest has guaranteed student employment. Um, and that just means if you're a Cedar Crest student and you want a job on campus, congratulations, we will find you a job somewhere. Uh, that job doesn't have to be in uh, your academic area of interest. It can be whatever you want. So we have students who are resident advisors. We have students who are um, inclusion advocates in our Center for Diversity and Inclusion. We also have nursing students who work in our theater department. So there's a lot of different things that you can do there and our Career Planning Center will help you find that. They also help you find jobs off campus as well as internships on and off campus. Um, so with internships, a lot of the students uh, don't necessarily have an internship uh, mandatory in their class, but it is great for kind of having some extra credits um, and that extra hands-on experience. We have a fitness center and our Rodale Aquatic Center. Um, the fitness center is open 24 seven uh, and is free with your ID. Um, and then our aquatic center also free with your ID, but they do have specific hours. We have a um, four year guarantee so that's just, uh, we have a paper that every major can sign minus education and nuclear med tech. Um, but you can sign that paper your first year here. And that's just, if you take those courses, then you will guarantee to be able to graduate in four years. And if you don't, that's on the college and we would pay for your extra semester if need be. We also have guaranteed study abroad. Um, so it is free for our students to do the sophomore expedition. And then here are some of our merit scholarships. Um, so every student gets a merit scholarship. And here is my contact information. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. If participants, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A section and any of our schools here will be able to answer them and give you more information. They'll also put their information in the chat for you as well if you'd like to get in contact with them. Up next, we have Full Sail University. Hello, awesome. So. Hello everybody, my name is Lauren. I'm with Full Sail University. Uh, I, I'm actually a graduate, uh, two-time graduate audio production and uh, public relations. And with Full Sail University, we're a proud supporter of creativity. And just to kind of show that creativity, I have a quick slide to show you guys exactly what Full Sail is all about. So enjoy this real quick. All right. Awesome. So yeah, that's just a little bit of what Full Sail is all about. Uh, honestly, we have multiple areas of study that you guys kind of seen on the screen, but some of the areas of study we have is music, gaming, art, film, technology, media communications, business, and sports. Now, the funny thing about these programs is they all intertwine with each other. So if you're doing something in music, you're going to end up working with people in games, films, business, etc. So that's kind of actually what makes us a little bit different here at Full Sail University. One of the few things, but let's go over quickly a couple of other things that makes our institution a little bit different. First things first, you are able to actually get your degree within half the time. And most institutions, you're getting your degree within four years. At Full Sail, you're actually getting it within two. So that's 20 months in total. You're only taking two classes per month with weekly assignments during each month as well. Plus, you get to start at any time. So when we say any time, I mean, you can literally graduate high school June, and then make your way to campus in July if you want to, 
Or if it's a couple months later, you can make it around then as well. You can literally start anytime because we do monthly start dates. As well as we do offer lifetime education, meaning that if you graduate um, within a certain time frame, you can always come back and either audit classes or retake classes to help you enhance your skills from previous times or what's going on in the industry currently. And we do have project portfolio based modules. So we have career summits and as well, everything that involves your program also involves real world experience. So I bet you're saying full state university, like you got a lot going on, but what about your graduates? What are they doing now? What are you doing right now? Well, if you're not aware, we have a couple of graduates who've been a part of things like uh, big name Hollywood films, music, and even games. And there's so many awards that they have won. And this is just the scale of just some of those awards itself. And that was just last year. This year coming up, we have some awards we're getting ready to show as well. But if you don't believe me with this, just the awards, you can actually see yourself with what our grads are currently doing in the multiple companies, Sony, Blizzard, HBO, WWE, one of my favorites, I'm a, favorite, I'm a wrestling fan. But yes, there's a couple of other companies as well. You can see a lot of our graduates being a part of <clears throat> over 60 plus career advisors. And again, always being able to come back at any time at all of your classes. Now we do have a couple of clubs as well. One of my favorite clubs is Full Cell Armada. It's actually an esports club we're going to talk about shortly. A cosplay club writing club, uh, as well as the WWE NXT initiative, where you actually get to be a part of NXT and helping out with film, audio, and the whole uh, shebang when it comes to the actual production itself. Now, Full Sail Armada, we actually have the largest esports arena on a college campus on our campus, and it's actually our esports team where you can actually play games like CSGO, Smash, uh, um, we used to have 419, uh, <laughs> 2K and others. And if you don't have a team or a game just yet, you can actually create a team as long as you can find a coach. So let's also go over how do you get started? Okay, there's a couple of things. First and foremost, if you are serious about your dream, we will take your dream seriously. That's how it is. That's all it is. And long as you also complete high school and get your uh, diploma, those are the main requirements to actually get on campus. Uh, we do have an entire scholarship guide on our website. If you like more information on there, you can definitely check out our website uh, under the column of admissions. As well, if you have a, a little relative, a cousin or something of that nature, who wants to get into these career paths as well, we do have full cell labs also that you can look into as well, which is summer camps. And lastly, if you want any more information about Full Cell or in general, here is a QR code that you can scan, as well as my email that you can personally reach out to me, as I am always open for questions. Thank you guys so much for your time, and uh, hope to hear from you again soon. Thank you so much. You appreciate it. Up next, we have Marist College. All right. Thank you so much. Can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, perfect. So, hi everyone. My name is Kate Bozinski. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Marist College. And Marist is located in Poughkeepsie, New York. We're about 90 minutes north of New York City. We are a liberal arts focused institution with about 5,000 students on campus. Um, so you'll see in the background here, some images of our campus. We are located directly on the Hudson River. So it is a waterfront campus um, and we have a lot of beautiful open green spaces. It's a very traditional looking college campus in terms of um, you know, just the, the space that students have to, to hang out, to you know, walk to and from class. Um, but at the same time, like I said, you can hop on the train and be in New York City within 90 minutes. So we're about one mile from the Poughkeepsie train station. And if you get on in the Poughkeepsie stop, you'll be um, an hour and a half from Grand Central or Penn Station, um, which is ideal for our students for internships, but also just for traveling to us via public transportation. So just some quick facts. We have about 5,500 students, like I said. So we're considered a small to medium-sized college when you compare us to other institutions. We do have over 40 majors, which I'll talk more about in a moment, um, but we do have some graduate programs as well. And I won't talk much about these um, other than the fact that you do have the opportunity, if you're interested, um, to add a graduate program to your undergraduate degree and potentially earn those two degrees over a five-year time span, which is an accelerated format. It's a great way to get two degrees in a shorter amount of time. 
we do have students coming to Marist from all over the country and really all over the world. So as of now, there's 44 states and 58 countries represented in the student body. Um, so students are finding us from, from everywhere and truly it's a, a diverse campus. Um, we also do have most students living on campus as well. It is a very residential campus. Not too many students will um, kind of pack up and go home on the weekends. So if you're looking for a place that's um, really community focused, then, then we, we definitely can offer that. Um, also on the right hand side is a little bit about our student success. So as you can see, 97% of our graduates are employed within six months of graduation. Now that could mean they're also attending graduate school or um, you know, going to a PhD program or something like that, but they're doing something productive within six months. And then they're graduating at a faster pace than their peers at public and private universities on a national average. So really the bottom line is students come here, they do everything that they wanna do in a productive amount of time and go out and do something great right away. These are the majors that we offer. Um, like I said before, we are a liberal arts focused college. So we do have a variety of liberal arts focused majors, um, things like English and history, et cetera. But we also have a lot of other majors that are more industry focused. Um, and those actually tend to be some of our more popular programs, things like communications, business, fashion design, fashion merchandising, computer science and cybersecurity, um, just to name a few. And so um, those are some of the ones that are a little bit more um, larger in numbers, but all the programs are quite strong and you can major in um, more than one thing. If you wanted to do a double major, that's totally possible. Um, in fact, most students at Marist have at least a major and a minor, sometimes more, more than that. Um, so really that's kind of the beauty of a liberal arts institution is that you can study more than one thing um, and still graduate within four years. At Marist, we really, really do emphasize just hands-on learning. So um, you'll see some images here in the back of, of students really kind of working with their peers um, on campus and off campus. But whether that's an internship, if it's research, if it's group work, um, study abroad, these are all things that we offer and really emphasize for students to elevate their, their educational experience. Um, so about 85% of our students do at least one internship. A lot of them take place in New York City. And actually a really great example of that is our Marist in Manhattan program, where you can live in New York City for a full semester, kind of like a study abroad program, um, and do a full-time internship right in the heart of Manhattan in housing that Marist has arranged for you. Um, so that's a great way to kind of combine living in a traditional campus and having some time in the city as well. We also do have about 50% of our students studying abroad to over 70 destinations around the world. So if that's something you're interested in, we were actually ranked second in the country for study abroad participation. And we do have our own campus in Florence, Italy as well. Um, so study abroad is something that I think we, um, we really try to pride ourselves on because we have such great connections globally. Um, research is also very prevalent at Marist. If you wanted to incorporate that into your four years, uh, we have a ton of research opportunities um, available to students of all, all years, freshman through senior year. In terms of involvement um, outside the classroom, our students are really active. We have a really engaged student community, um, over 80 clubs and organizations in total as well as division one varsity athletics. Um, so if you're looking for a school that still has small class sizes, but kind of that larger school spirited feel, um, then we can definitely offer that to you. And in addition to D1 sports, we have club and intramural sports as well. If you're interested in considering Marist or applying to Marist, um, these are some quick facts that of course you can also find on our website, but we do have a variety of freshman application deadlines. Um, they're all a little bit different. If you need help in terms of which one to select, we can always guide you in the right direction. And then you can see at the bottom here, just um, an idea of the type of student that we typically admit in terms of GPA and test scores. Although we are a test optional institution and we have been for 12 years. So it's something that is really important to us. And if test scores are not your thing, that's okay. Um, we definitely um, you know, can kind of look beyond that and, and look at all of your other qualifications. If you want to visit with us, engage with us in other ways, if you like what you heard today, uh, we do have campus visits offered seven days a week, whether that's an information session or a tour. We have virtual programming. Um, all of this is on our website. So please, if you wanna hear more, we have options for you. And I'll put my email address in the, in the chat as well, so you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I will hand it off to the next person. Thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate it. Absolutely beautiful campus, love learning more about it.
Up next, we have York College of Pennsylvania. You are muted, Andrea. Oh, there thanks. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me today. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about York College of Pennsylvania. Um, not only am I an associate director of admissions at the college, but I'm also a York College alum, and I absolutely love my student experience. So I'm so excited to be able to tell you a little bit more about us. So York College, we are located in York, Pennsylvania. So that is South Central Pennsylvania, which is in close proximity to several major cities that are within an hour or two hours away. Um, we're only about two and a half hours, I would say less than that from Philadelphia. Washington DC is two hours. Baltimore, Maryland is less than an hour, Harrisburg. Um, so that means we are in a jobs rich area. So a big emphasis of York is our hands on learning experiences. So the internships and opportunities that students are able to experience, a lot of that comes down to our location and then the resources that we have in our industry area. So um, every student, 100% of our students is able to complete some sort of hands-on or project-based learning before they graduate. So this can take place in a couple of different forms. Um, internships, co-ops, those are a big uh, learning experience, especially for our engineering students. So they're completing a series of three co-ops where they're actually working um, full-time hours basically at different companies, um, learning more about their skills and job opportunities, project-based learning. We will have our instructors will be leading either research projects or actual, um, you know, experience projects with their classes and study abroad opportunities. So these are always a great option to explore and we have several ways that these can take shape. Um, if you're interested in doing an entire semester abroad, maybe at our sister school in York, England, or if you're interested in a shorter excursion, maybe over the summer, there's a uh, four or six week trip somewhere that one of our faculty members is leading. You're welcome to jump in on that experience as well. Uh, we are a private liberal arts college. So we have many different majors and programs of study. So we have those grouped into five different schools our Graham School of Business, our School of Behavioral Sciences and Education, our Myers School of Nursing and Health Professions, our Kinsley School of Engineering, Sciences, Technology, as well as our School of the Arts, Communications and Global Studies. So you can see our complete list of programs here on this slide. Um, so we do have a lot to offer. We have about 4,000 total students when you factor in our graduate and undergraduate students. Um, so within our different majors and schools, we actually have a couple of graduate programs, including an MBA. We have a two doctorate level degrees in nursing. So when you put all those students together and you spread them out into our different programs and schools, we're able to keep our class sizes small. So your average class size at your college is going to be about 19 students. So when you put these things together, um, the opportunities we have for hands-on learning, um, great mentorship from our faculty, you're able to get more than a degree. You actually have a portfolio of work and a resume that you've developed in your time with us so that you have those skills to show off along with your degree. So 91% of our recent graduates are employed or in graduate fields so you can, or in graduate school. So you can see um, some of the different areas where our students have gone on. Of course, we can't list every single employer or graduate school on this slide, but this just kind of gives you a sampling of some of the different opportunities that our students are pursuing after they graduate. For clubs and athletics, this is one of my favorite things to talk about is York College is very easy to get involved um, if clubs, activities, recreation, um, or if sports aren't your thing, even just clubs based on interest, diversities, hobby, things like that, there is a lot to offer. Um, we are a D3 school, um, so we don't have athletic scholarships, but we have 23 very competitive varsity sports, everything from basketball, tennis, soccer, cross country, track and field, we have a lot going on there. But our club and intramural sports are also really popular. So if you want uh, to just kind of enjoy uh, the activities with a team and play a sport, but you don't want the pressure or commitment of a varsity sport, um, we have everything from flag football to intramural soccer to dodgeball. Um, so a lot of different ways to get involved. 
Um, clubs, it's very easy to start your own club, but we have more than 100 different clubs on campus already. So depending on what students are into, that can really sort of, um, you know, cover the spectrum of different activities and interests. So there's a lot that students can do on campus. And given our size, it's really nice because it's very easy to get involved. We have a lot to offer, but it's also small enough that you're able to make those close connections and friendships. Uh, like I said, we are a private liberal arts college, but we are known for being a best value. So our tuition, uh, we're proud to keep that low and affordable for our students. And every student who is accepted to your college is automatically offered a merit scholarship anywhere from two to $10,000 a year. And that's for all four years of your enrollment. So we are committed to being affordable for our students. And to apply, uh, you can apply for free online. We are on the Comet app, or you can apply directly through our website. Either or is fine. Uh, we are test optional. So if you haven't taken the SATs or ACTs, no problem. You can just submit two letters of recommendation along with your high school transcript for that test optional pathway. And the best way to get a good picture of what your college is all about is to come visit us in person. So we'd love to have you on campus. So feel free to scan the barcode or visit our website for more information. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. And a reminder to our participants to use that Q&A function if you have questions for any of our institutions here at any time during the presentations. Up next, we have Xavier University. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate it. All right. Okay, hopefully we can all see that. Um, so uh, my name is Jason Cloutier. Uh, I work as a regionally based director for Xavier University. I've been employed here since the summer of 2008. And um, the good thing about Xavier, uh, I'm gonna give you a, a brief background on this, kind of what Xavier is all about, what makes Xavier um, potentially a, a unique place for you is that I think we're a lot smaller than people give us credit for. I think if I was doing a traditional high school visit and I was in front of a bunch of students and maybe a guidance counselor or two, and I said, you know, um, Xavier University, how have you heard of it? If you've heard of it at all, uh, give me some ideas. And, and more often than not, the knee-jerk response is, oh, you're a Catholic high school somewhere in Pennsylvania or New York. Well, we're actually in Cincinnati, Ohio, so kind of uh, not too far from New York, not too far from Pennsylvania. Um, but I think most students are going to have that knee-jerk response of, oh, I see you guys playing college basketball on television. And while that's a terrific conversation starter, we are certainly a heck of a lot more than just a Division One Big East school. Um, so I'm not going to belabor the point about uh, Division One Big East varsity athletics. But what I will tell you is that, you know, if you look at this particular slide, you're going to see that we are predominantly an out-of-state institution. So students coming from Pennsylvania are going to feel right at home at Xavier. Uh, students that are coming from, say, um, Eastern PA, I, I think the drive from Philly, uh, the Philly area out to Cincinnati is probably going to be between seven to eight hours, depending on traffic. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the cool thing about Xavier is that, you know, we're with 5,200 undergrads, you know, if you're the type of student that really thrives in an environment where, you know, a professor knows you by your first name, knows your strengths, knows your weaknesses, knows where you're from, this is the type of, of environment where I think you can really hang your hat for four years. I think other great things about Xavier is our Jesuit identity. What is a Jesuit institution? Well, there's 27 of us, um, and we all share kind of the same recurring theme, if you will. It's men and women for and with others. And what does that mean? Does that mean you have to be Catholic to apply? Certainly not. Does that mean that you're going to have to take a, a you know, whole bunch of courses about Catholicism? Perhaps. Um, what I mean by that is, yes, we have a core curriculum of roughly 50 credits. Uh, nine credits will be in theology and, and six credits will be in philosophy. Um, but you never have to take a course about Catholicism unless you wish. But with men and women for and with others being at the forefront of everything we do, uh, I have I can surmise it by saying, if you go to a, a Jesuit institution, you're going to figure out in short order that the world doesn't revolve around yourself. You're going to want to give back to that community that you're calling home for four years. Um, you're going to want to volunteer your time in that, in that city environment. And all 27 Jesuit schools around the country are either in or immediately next to an urban environment where that particular community depends on the Xavier and the, and the, uh, and the Jesuit community that, 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 um, that actually is in their backyard for community service and philanthropic work. Um, you can kind of see on this slide, you know, briefly, you know, what, what some of the offerings are at Xavier in terms of some of the outcomes. 
you know, I, I think that uh, a lot of parents and a lot of students are really going to be harping at the lower left-hand corner of the slide. Ninety-eight percent of the students, you know, have a job or in grad school within six months. And I think moms and dads around the country are like, okay, what is this? What what is my you know investment in my son or daughter's education going to net me by the time they graduate? What's the likelihood they're going to graduate in four years? What's the what's the probability that they're going to have a job uh, or they're going to be in grad school in in, in in a major that was actually specific to them? So a student graduates with a finance degree, what's the likelihood that they're going to be getting a job at you know Procter and Gamble or a job at Fidelity Investments? You come to Cincinnati, you know, use Philadelphia as a reference point, you know, and within the greater Philadelphia area, I believe there's a, almost 200,000 college students. I mean, that's that's a mind-boggling number. You go to Boston, you go to New York, you go to Washington, D.C. along the I-95 coast, and you're going to figure out that they're huge college towns. From a social perspective, it's great being there. But from the perspective of what's the likelihood of me getting a, a, an internship or a co-op in that particular city where I'm not fighting with all the other schools that are right in my own backyard, that's certainly a rational thought process. And you come to Xavier in Cincinnati, there's only about 75,000 college students rather than 200,000. So you become kind of the big fish in the small pond scenario. Uh, middle 50%, we're about a B plus or an A minus school. Heaven forbid if you should ever have a C in the class. Honest to God, it's going to be okay. I would rather have the students who have scraped their knees a little bit along the way apply to Xavier because they've learned something from that. Um, I want the students who, you know, don't have an absolutely perfect transcript, okay? And yes, maybe there's a couple of class fellow Victorians that, that are watching this particular uh, session right now and thinking, well, I'm clearly not going to apply to Xavier. That's not the case at all. But I want you to understand that, yes, we are going to be looking at your GPA predominantly. We've been test optional for several years now. I don't see the point of, of wasting four hours of an for a, on, a, on, a, on a placement exam on a Saturday morning when you don't, when it's, it, it, for Xavier's standpoint, it, it's just, it's unnecessary. Okay. Uh, real quick picture, uh, kind of what our campus looks like. It's about 200 acres. You can walk diag diagonally from one side of the campus to the other in roughly 15 minutes. Uh, to get to downtown Cincinnati is going to be about a 10 to 12 minute car ride. Um, you know, 90% of the students either live on our campus or within a few blocks of campus, which is kind of nice. And you're only expected to live on campus through the end of sophomore year. The Housing and Residence Life Department is probably going to encourage you to look at exploring an off-campus opportunity as you uh, enter your junior and senior years. Uh, but if you choose the same campus all four years, that's entirely up to you. Um, yes, we're part of the Common Application. I would say 95% of students who apply to Xavier are applying via Common App. Uh, this year's class, 75% of them have actually applied test optional. So again, you don't need to get anything in terms of an SAT or an ACT unless you want to. This is my contact information. Uh, I do appreciate your time spending with uh, us six universities here, and we'll be answering some questions at the end. Thanks. Thank you so much. That's a great reminder about that Q&A. So go ahead and put any questions you have in that Q&A function, and we'll have um, some time at the end as well. Up next, we have Haverford College. Um, thank you. All right. Hi, friends. Uh, so my name is Ainsley Bruton. Um, I'm an admission counselor at Haverford College, uh, and I'm also a Haverford alum. I just graduated last May with the class of 2021. Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit about who we are, what makes us distinctive um, in my presentation today. So just some kind of quick overview facts. Uh, we're a small liberal arts college, and we currently have about 1,400 students enrolled, with about 98% of our students living on campus. So we're a really highly residential community. Um, and our campus is, is always full of so many students, uh, about 88% of which come from outside of Pennsylvania. Um, our unofficial mascot is the black squirrel, which you'll um, see many of around our campus. And we also have a tree to student ratio of six to one, uh, and we're a nationally recognized arboretum. Um, and here are some stats for uh, our current first year class of 2025. Um, we are located in Haverford, Pennsylvania. So we're about 20 minutes outside of uh, the city of Philadelphia. Um, which is, uh, of course, the second largest city on the East Coast and sixth biggest in the United States. Um, it takes about 20 minutes by public transportation to get in and out of the city, and it's really easily accessible via our campus, um, as we have four different train stations within walking distance that can take you into the city really quickly. Um, and increasingly, our relationship with the city is becoming more and more um, kind of prominent and important, and we're always trying to um, find new ways to engage with the resources um, and cultural opportunities that are available to our students in the city. Um, here is a list of our top 10 majors, although that really fluctuates year to year. 
Um, and even the biggest majors have only 20 to 30 students in them in a given year. So you really do get to know your professors really well and develop close relationships with your fellow students. Um, our academic environment is also built to be really intentionally collaborative um, and give you lots of space to explore and work closely with peers and your professors. Um, and a little under half of our faculty actually live on campus. Uh, we have a student to faculty ratio of nine to one and our average class size is about 14 students. Our faculty are really deeply engaged with the community and really invested in students. None of our classes are taught by TAs. And so you really get to form those relationships with your professors, get to be involved in their research and the cool things that they're doing um, and have you know, mentors and people who are really um, invested in your personal learning and your growth throughout your four years at Haverford. Um, something else that's distinctive about our academic program is that we are part of a uh, consortia. Um, so we have three different schools that we are in consortia programs with. Bryn Mawr, Swarthmore, and University of Pennsylvania. So our students can take classes at any of the other three colleges. Um, at Bryn Mawr and Swarthmore, you can take any of their classes offered there. And at Penn, you can take classes that aren't offered within Bryn Mawr, Haverford, and Swarthmore. Um, all of those are free for you to take. Um, and that just gives us so many more classes and opportunities available to us. Um, and about 50% of students will take a class at one of the other schools in a given semester. And about 95% will take a class somewhere else um, in their four years at Haverford. So it really just expands our reach and, and gives us the resources of a much larger college. Something else that's distinctive about our academic program is the opportunity to do a senior thesis. 100% of Haverford majors complete a senior thesis, which is really the chance to be doing graduate level research at the undergraduate level. So you get to choose your topic uh, and spend a year developing this academic process closely with an advisor in your department. Um, and at the end, you'll have a body of um, academic work and some students even go on to get their theses published or continue that research after they graduate. Um, but even beyond the senior thesis, the opportunity to do undergraduate research is really foundational to a Haverford education. We have four different centers uh, and um, yeah, locations on campus that sponsor research opportunities for students. So the Center for Arts and Humanities, the Natural Science Center, the Center for Peace and Global Citizenship, and our Visual Culture Arts and Media Center. Um, these uh, places act as grant making bodies and can give up to $10,000 of individual research funding to students um, as early as their freshman year. Um, and they can also sponsor internships or externship opportunities for students throughout the year or during the summer. Um, and also, uh, provide uh, resources for students to bring speakers to campus or put on um, events or run a seminar in a semester. Um, the academic centers really give our students a lot of freedom to explore academically um, and ask interesting questions that they want to pursue. Um, something else I really want to highlight about um, our programs is our uh, commitment to a system of shared governance. So at Haverford, students are a really big part of the decision making of the college. They're involved in all decision-making committees, in hiring committees, um, and generally have a lot of agency and say um, in how the college is run. So every year through a process called plenary, students can um, propose changes that they'd like to see happen uh, on our campus. Um, and then the whole school discusses and votes those resolutions um, collectively as a student body. Um, those principles are really um, kind of founded in our Quaker history. Um, and so we are really kind of um, deeply invested in the idea of um, student voice and student activism on our campus. Um, and we really want for students to be able to have these opportunities um, to take on leadership roles and uh, be involved in the decision making of the college. And then just quickly, I want to highlight what students go on to do after they graduate from Haverford. So about 67 will uh, continue their education within five years of graduating in a PhD or master's program. And within about six, six months of graduation, uh, about 90 to 95% of our graduates have secured post-grad plans. Um, so that concludes the end of my presentation and I'll put my uh, info in the chat. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to all of our schools here today for letting us know more about your institutions. Um, we're so excited that you could join us tonight. We have some time for some Q&A, so I'll go ahead and ask everyone to um, come back on the screen as we get into that. Um, our first question for the evening is, 
what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And um, we'll go in the same order, starting with Cedar Crest College. Hi, um, so my advice would be definitely visit as many colleges as you possibly can. Along with those visits, if you are able to shadow um, an upperclassman, definitely visit classes, see what kinds of classes you're interested in. Um, a lot of us mentioned like class sizes, so see if you like the smaller classes, larger classes, things like that. Let's uh, go to Marist College. So I would say to just keep an open mind. Um, I know it's easy to kind of get caught up in where you're friends, your peers might be applying or, you know, looking at schools, but there's a lot of colleges. There's like over 3000 in the U.S. alone. So um, if you feel like there's definitely like that competitive, you know, edge when you're talking with your people in your community, um, you know, look beyond that or, you know, just try something that you wouldn't think of initially. Look at a big school, look at a small school, see, see what sticks, you know, um, you're not going to know what you like until you, until you explore a little bit more. All right, full sale? Yes. Um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Uh, kind of similar to what they were previously saying as well, I believe it's Kate, was just trying to find out what your, your thing is, your niche. Um, we tell students, like, if you're into gaming, you're into that kind of stuff, like, tackle it in a, in a sense of trying to find a video game you might want to make, or if you're into music, going into band, or if you're into theater, going into film, things of that nature. But if you're trying to find what your niche is, I, I say just kind of play around with the, the toys that you have already, which is your phone. Like, it, it, social media is a great example of like what exactly you might already be interested in or want to get into. I'll jump in. I think I'm next, Denny. Yep. Okay, great. So I want to echo uh, what Sierra said is to visit schools. Uh, make sure you visit your schools. Uh, you might have that, you know, sparkly moment where you're walking around a college campus and you just fall in love and say, this is it. So visit your schools. And if you can visit them multiple times so you can see what they're like, not just on one day at an open house, but, you know, regularly during the week. This gives you an idea of what some of your future classmates might be doing and just kind of what the vibe is on campus. So definitely visit your schools and I'm going to sneak in a second piece of advice is just to don't forget the FAFSA apply for financial aid. <laughs> Andrea great advice um, I think you, you, you totally explained one of the things I was going to say so I'll, I'll shift I'll shift gears here and say um, don't be afraid to leave the nest. The nest is this cozy little 250 mile radius around mom and dad's house that they built for you right uh, so don't be afraid to leave that. I know it's comfortable. I know you've probably been there for 17 years or so. But at the end of the day, experiencing a different area of the country can be incredibly rewarding. And, 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 and it, it can be eye opening. You know, I mean, if you've grown up in the greater, you know, eastern uh, uh, PA area, Cincinnati's slightly different from that, as is probably Poughkeepsie, as is, you know, where your college in Pennsylvania is located. So I, I think that just being open to the idea of over 3000 colleges don't just apply to the schools that are in your own backyard would be my biggest piece of advice. Um, I think my general advice for students in the college process is always to talk to current students at the schools you're looking at. Um, a lot of schools have student ambassadors listed on their websites. And if you take a, a tour of your campus, those are usually done by students. Um, so really just spend some time with those, um, those students and ask them questions about what their day-to-day -day experiences, what the campus environment and culture is at the schools. Um, and that can really start to give you a sense of what kind of place you see yourself thriving in and, um, and really kind of help you visualize who you're gonna be in college and, and where you're gonna be able to be successful. Thank you so much, everyone. That's all fantastic advice. I always like to hop in on this one and say to um, stay organized. There are so many dates and deadlines. You, you saw them from all the schools here today. Um, so 
if you know keep a, a spreadsheet or you know something on your phone some way to keep you organized um, that you can refer back to to know okay Xavier's early action deadline is this time oh um, you know that scholarship is due during this date um, that way you know you stay organized and same thing with like have a dedicated email for this it's professional sounding um, you'll get so many communications and you don't want that like getting into your spam with like you know your Sephora email or whatever so um, keep it all organized and I think that'll help you out in the process as well um, so that you can write notes too about the institutions and um, you know it, it, it'll just help you in that process too so um, I mean, what's yeah. Sephora? oh it's a makeup company <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking it's just kind of funny you brought it you dropped Sephora in this little presentation never would I have thought you would someone would drop Sephora in this so this is good it's okay. <laughs> I always think like, you know, just those random spam emails that you get like all the time going in and uh, things like that. So, <laughs> um, all right, we that is our time for tonight. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time um, to be here tonight. Really encourage you to, um, you know, check out all of these wonderful institutions that you heard more about this evening. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions that are happening right after this one. Um, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. So thank you so much um, for being here this evening and have um, a great evening and best of luck on your college search process. <laughs>